Hello everyone, my name is Polina Tolmich and I'm a PhD student in Nanyan Technological University and Institute of High Performance Computing ASTAR Singapore. I'm going to present our work on formal analysis of composable DeFi protocols. This is a joint work with my colleagues from Nanyan Technological University Singapore, Ili, Shan Weilin, and Yan Lu. Decentralized finance, or DeFi, is an ecosystem of financial applications that are built on blockchain using smart contracts, which are programs that run on blockchain. DeFi applications implement decentralized versions of a variety of traditional financial applications. They enable, for example, trading between cryptocurrencies or lending them. Currently, there are 40 billions of dollars stored in DeFi applications. One of the most appealing and widely discussed features of DeFi is its composability. In that sense, the components of the DeFi ecosystem are compared with the pieces of money Lego that can be composed together to create new interesting use cases. Unfortunately, composability also introduces additional risks to the DeFi applications. Since smart contracts are known to contain vulnerabilities, composability implies that if one protocol is vulnerable, then other DeFi protocols that interact with it or are built on top of it can also be vulnerable. In that sense, verification of security and correctness of these protocols requires compositional analysis. Therefore, in this work we try to address the problem of correctness and security verification of a composition of interacting DeFi protocols. We do so by following formal verification approach. We take the source code of the smart contracts of these DeFi applications and translate them into a formal model. For these applications, we also define a set of properties, which are statements, that we want to hold throughout the execution of these protocols. One example of a property is a so-called token balance invariant, which is a property of the token smart contract. The property states that all the balances of the users who hold these tokens combined uh, are equal to the total supply. Then, with the model and the properties, we can utilize the formal verification framework PAD to check if this property indeed hold at all cases in this model or if there exists a violation which the framework reports. In this work, we focus on the middle two layers of this LEGO pyramid, which are stablecoins as well as other tokens and also two types of decentralized financial applications, lending protocols and decentralized exchanges. Curve is a decentralized exchange that enables instant trading between stablecoins. Stablecoins, as well as other tokens, are smart contracts that are implemented according to a standard, usually ERC-20. Another key component of the decentralized exchange or another DeFi protocol is a pool, a smart contract that aggregates tokens of one or more types. These tokens are often referred to as liquidity since they are used to facilitate the operation uh, of this decentralized exchange. Now let's assume that there is a trader who wants to swap his DAI for some USDC. To do so, he sends a certain amount of DAI to the pool and withdraws some amount of USDC from there, thereby increasing the amount of DAI in the pool and decreasing the amount of USDC. Now, that also means that the price of the DAI had decreased while the price of USDC had increased. It happens since the exchange rate between these two tokens is determined by a price setting formula that is intrinsic to a curve pool. If another trader wants to perform the same operation after trader 1, he sends his DAI and correspondingly increases the amount of DAI in the pool and decreases even further the amount of USDC in the pool. And since USDC is now more expensive, he receives much less USDC than trader 1. This phenomenon is called slippage, uh, which is the difference between the expected price and the actual price of the transaction. This mechanism can be used by trader 1 to adversely manipulate the price, which would negatively affect trader 2. So where does this liquidity come from? It can be provided by a so-called liquidity provider, a user who holds some tokens that are supported as liquidity in the pool and is willing to deposit his tokens there to earn some interest, which is actually being earned from the traders who pay fees. In this case, this liquidity provider can supply his USDC into the pool, thereby restoring the balance between the tokens in the pool. In return for his input, the pool issues a certain amount of pool tokens that are transferred to this liquidity provider. These tokens serve as a representation of the share of the liquidity that this user had provided. Later, when this liquidity provider wants to redeem his deposit back, he sends these pool tokens to the curve pool and in return receives his original deposit with probably some earned interest. 
However, due to possible price movements in the pool, these liquidity tokens, such as USDC that the provider is trying to withdraw, can now be cheaper than they were at the time when he deposited them, which means that the liquidity provider will suffer some losses, and this issue is known as impermanent loss. Lending protocols, such as Compound, also rely on pools as the key component. However, in this case, lending protocols usually support one token as liquidity, for example USDC. In a similar fashion, a liquidity provider can supply his USDC into the compound pool and receive a certain amount of the pool tokens that can be used to redeem back his original deposit in USDC. In the lending pool, a user can also serve as a borrower. Then, he has to provide some collateral in another cryptocurrency to the, pro to the platform and then he'll be able to borrow a certain amount of this USDC from the pool. The risks uh, that are specific to the lending protocols include overutilization. Overutilization means that borrowers take out all the liquidity from this compound pool and do not repay. In that case, if the liquidity provider would like to redeem back his original deposit, he would not be able to do so since the pool has no liquidity to pay him back. In this work, we focus on the Curve Compound Pool, an actual pool available in Curve and which is also a composition of the pools of Curve and Compound. In this case, when a liquidity provider wants to supply some USDC into Curve, Curve does not use it directly. Instead, Curve transfers these tokens to Compound where they will be used by other users who can borrow them. In return for this USDC, Compound issues a certain amount of pool tokens called CUSDC, and this CUSDC will be used by the Curve pool to perform trading between CUSDC and CDI, which are pool tokens of Curve, or the underlying tokens USDC and DAI. In return for the original deposit, Curve also issues some pool tokens of Curve, and these tokens are being transferred to the liquidity provider as a representation of his share in these pools. However, we know that both of these protocols are subject to certain risks. So here, we try to analyze whether the interplay between these protocols can negatively affect either of the protocols or the end user. In addition to the curve compound pool, we also consider four types of users. These are liquidity providers in curve and compound who supply their stable coins and can later redeem their deposit back using the corresponding pool token. We also consider a trader who can swap tokens that are supported by the curve pool and a compound borrower who can take a loan in USDC from compound pool. Since users act concurrently and their actions affect the prices, we try to understand whether some users can perform certain actions that might lead to negative outcome for both protocols and other users. To formally analyze the behaviors of users, for example, of the curve liquidity provider, we define them as a sequence of their possible interactions with tokens and protocols. The system that we later analyze is therefore the interleaving of all these four user behaviors. In other words, we exhaustively analyze all possible orderings between these users' actions. In this slide, we can see the tree of all possible scenarios that can happen due to different user actions and their ordering. Since users interact with DeFi protocols and tokens by calling their public smart contract functions, we formally define the possible user actions by translating the actual source code of the smart contracts into their formal representations. To evaluate our approach, we define five properties of interest that are relevant for all tokens, compound, curve, and the composition of the curve and compound protocols that we analyze. Our modeling and verification technique allowed us to identify two violations of these properties. Let's take a closer look at the property number 5, which is called bounded loss. The property states that for a liquidity provider who has successfully deposited his USDC into the curve compound pool and now tries to redeem his original deposit back, the loss will be bounded by a certain value, for example 20% of the original deposit. Let's look at a situation in which this property does not hold due to the impermanent loss issue. In this case, the liquidity provider is able to successfully deposit his USDC into the curve compound pool and receives his pool tokens. Now, let's assume that there is a trader who now swaps a very big amount of CDI 
for a very big amount of CUSDC. Therefore, it leaves a very small number of CUSDC tokens in the curve pool, and therefore making them very expensive. In that case, if a liquidity provider tries to withdraw his original deposit back using his pool tokens, the pool evaluates the value of the corresponding CUSDC for his pool tokens as very small, since they are very expensive. In return, the user receives a very small amount of USDC compared to his original deposit, and the property is violated. This property can also be violated due to the overutilization issue in the compound pool, showing the potential negative effects of composability. In this case, the curve liquidity provider is also able to successfully deposit his USDC tokens in the curve compound pool and receive the pool tokens back. However, now let's assume that there is a borrower who is able to successfully deplete the compound pool of all USDC tokens by loaning them and not repaying them back. Now, if the liquidity provider in Curve wants to redeem his USDC back, the Curve pool will have to request these tokens from the compound pool. However, since compound pool does not have enough liquidity to pay back the curve pool, curve will also not be able to transfer these tokens back to the user. Therefore, the liquidity provider will not receive any of his original deposit and the property is also violated. Our verification approach allowed us to analyze this and four other properties and identify some of the violations. In conclusion, in this work we proposed formal definitions for the key components of the DeFi applications, such as tokens and pools. We also proposed an approach to formally model the implementations of DeFi protocols as well as their interactions between each other and the users. We also demonstrated how automatic verification can be applied to ensure safety and correctness of DeFi protocols. In future, we plan to consider an extended functionality of these DeFi protocols by, for example, including liquidity mining and governance mechanisms into consideration. We also plan to consider a larger set of properties covering both security and crypto-economical aspects of the execution of DeFi protocols. Finally, we also plan to perform compositional analysis of more complex and larger scale DeFi interactions. Thank you very much for your attention. The code for our model is available on GitHub. Please contact me if you have any questions. I would be happy to answer them.